Mm -hmm. if you need to. All right, it should be recording, right? If not, yep, it's recording. Okay. So let's talk about the shoulder joint first because this is what we're talking about here. Oh, see, as you can tell, I got rid of his last time because we were just demoing it. So let's just do this. There you go. Because it's your left one, so we'll go focus on the left one. Okay, so right here, what we're trying to do is we're trying to show you the anatomy of the shoulder joint. Now, I'm going to pretend a little bit like you don't know much about the shoulder joint, which you probably already do. So with... Um, your type of sport and activity that you like to do is probably a lot of cleaning, a lot of jerking, a lot of pressing, a lot of overhead stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things I've noticed is that you just don't have good external rotation, meaning going backward. That's going to be really, really important when you're like squatting because think about squatting. It's and like you put it more back. Yeah, so you don't have a lot of that. That's not always a bad thing because it doesn't necessarily you don't necessarily need it, but you definitely do need some of that external rotation in the shoulders and the way you get that is one to be loose through here you have to have a good healthy rotator cuff to get you in those positions and you also have to have good strong upper back muscles to help open this up right i mean if this strong upper back was strong but your shoulders were like immobile you still wouldn't be able to do it mm -hmm. right so if we have really mobile shoulders they'll go back but you can't hold your shoulder place in place if this is weak so that's what squatting how it comes into play when you're like this right does that make sense yes so a lot of times you'll get a little tension in the shoulder or anything like that probably more than likely because of the strain that it's having on the rotator cuff itself mm -hmm. so with all pushing and jerking and cleaning and power cleans and internal rotation stuff doing stuff like this mm -hmm. like uh do you do this a lot for that one no not really good because i was gonna say don't don't right now for okay. right now so what happens is if we look at the rotator cuff here and what we're going to do is we're going to look at the muscles now i want you to understand that the rotator cuff muscles a lot of people think about like the rotator cuff they think about oh it's just this one muscle it's four muscles okay four different muscles that are designed to do one thing and one thing only stabilize and hold on to the darn shoulder so it doesn't pop out of place that is all it's designed to do so what we happen to have is this one people say i tore my rotator cuff or i hurt my rotator cuff they tend to talk about this muscle called the supraspinatus or supraspinatus muscle it attaches down into here and it runs right underneath this ac joint which is this hard bone right there so this right here this uh ac joint or acromion to the clavicle joint is called uh or that's the ac joint right there and so what we normally see is this muscle runs down and attaches underneath here. So you can kind of see this tunnel, right? Mm -hmm. How it kind of attaches right there and it runs underneath that tunnel. So imagine that this is the roof. Mm -hmm. This bone, the, the, the circle, is the, the floor and in between that roof and floor is the muscle. If we took that roof and we lowered it mm -hmm. or we raised this or both, what we start to do is create a smaller room for that tunnel. And that's where it happens a lot of times with the rotator cup and it starts banging up against the roof. And if we start hitting our own head up against the roof, we're going to have some bumps, bruises and things like that. And in this case, what we're talking about is the rotator cuff muscle, the supraspinatus or supraspinatus muscle that is actually getting bruised and injured over and over and over as a result of that. So that's why certain muscles when i was like does it hurt here and here potentially here all the time are you constantly sore after like your your lifts are doing this and when i did certain movements like this and this and this i'm all testing the ac joint in its relation to the supraspinatus muscle yeah and so in your case unfortunately tell you uh it hurt you mm -hmm. you know and so that tells me that when we do st uh, uh, certain things like this and we rotate it up we're literally trying our best to create a smaller tunnel here to make it smaller and smaller and smaller and so what we can do is we can do use the a normal anatomy that we know to help create smaller windows and then that window can hurt it even uh, even if it like you know if you do it to the other one it doesn't hurt you because it's not injured mm -hmm. and in this case you've been injuring it over and over and over and you just haven't got, got gotten a break you haven't released certain other muscles in addition, right? So what I'm saying here is that you're having a little bit of an impingement syndrome. 
That's the true medical term there. Mm -hmm. And so that impingement syndrome essentially means that we're pinching that area. And then because we're pinching that area, certain mechanics within the scapula and the shoulder blade are not moving properly. Maybe this one isn't going back far enough. It's not doing this a little bit. The shoulder joint's not staying into, into its position properly. And it's just migrating just maybe a millimeter or two millimeters out of place. I'm not saying that it's like, like out of place. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that it could be just a millimeter that's compressing it. And if you keep compressing it, eventually what starts to happen to the rope it starts to fray. And then you get an MRI one, two, three, five years down the road and you say, oh, you have degenerative tendinosis or you have, and I'm just throwing out these names that they'll tell you, you have a rotator cuff syndrome. It's not that you had a rotator cuff syndrome, it's that you had an impingement that you, you overlooked for years or week or months or years. You could still heal, you're really young, it's very easy to heal from this. Mm -hmm. That's why I was like, dude, this you're gonna laugh at yourself. And like two months from now, you're gonna be like, why didn't I do this sooner? Um, you need to definitely avoid certain things, you need to do other things. But in this case, it's pretty simple to fix. Mm -hmm. So why are you also having some tension through here? This is a really common area that we get a lot of irritation of the dorsal scapular nerve, which is this nerve that runs down from the neck. Remember when I pulled your head forward? What we did is we did this and I like, does that feel like your pain? Uh, a lot of people will feel that like shoulder blade pain, like right around this area or this area or right around there as a result of this type of neck movement. And that's because it, it pulls down and, con and um, sorry, it pulls down and actually irritates the neck area. So let's take a look at that area. So far, are you with me? Mm -hmm. Cool. So here's the dorsal scapular nerve. If we follow it back up, a lot of times we see a branch of this nerve that gets irritated right around here. And we can have this nerve that controls these muscles right here here's the nerve and it feels like a knot that's constantly there and i was able to reproduce that exact pain on you by pushing you this way and then going that way and you're like oh my god it feels better i don't feel it mm. so i think that you rolling this out might feel good i don't think it's actually going to solve your problem okay I, rolling this stuff out with the rotator cuff can definitely help you for sure okay the rotator cuff can help you this is actually more of this pain that you're feeling here, that knot that's always like right around there, mm -hmm. that's actually more of a neck issue. Mm. That's why a lot of people don't get results. Okay. It's because they're actually focusing on the shoulder blade, not the neck. Okay. You need to focus on the neck and the shoulder blade together. Oh. Damn. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you are actually in really good shape. Um, like, like, you you really are don't don't kid yourself um it's just gonna take a little bit of work okay. realistically and you know i'm not one of those people you probably can already understand i'm not one of those people that say don't do this don't do that don't do this i want you to be exercising I, when the gyms open up i yeah. want you to be back in there um and i want you to be active right away but use this time wisely literally by the time you're able to go back into the gym you're probably going to end up being 100 percent Okay. If you do this stuff correctly, I wouldn't do much overhead pressing right now. No. Okay. Including like shoulder presses and incline presses? Okay. I wouldn't. I wouldn't right now. Okay. I would go back to the bare basics. I would do the internal rotations, the external rotations, and stuff like that. And I would really start to do some of these, um, these programs that would actually start building your rehab up and building up your spinal posture and your upper back posture and your neck posture mm -hmm. that will actually align this stuff better and then it will make you feel much better. So you'd be doing some of the Graston work and soft tissue work and some of the rehab and you'd literally be just as strong if not stronger right away and you'd probably be able to hop right back into it. Okay. I don't want to say back into it 100%, but you might be able to, like, if you're push pressing, let's just say 100 pounds, now you're push pressing 75 pounds, no problem, no pain, no flare up, no tenderness, uh, other than just general muscle soreness. Mm -hmm. That's what you want. Yes. You don't want pain. Mm -hmm. Because what can happen is, like I said, you can get one of the two things. You can get that tendinosis where it's, like, getting chronic, and it can start fraying a little bit, and, like, you know, essentially you see these muscles here, just like this, imagine this, they could start fraying a little bit and like a rope fraying. Mm -hmm. That's where you can start getting some issues. 
Um, or you can get some AC, like other muscles start to compensate and the AC joint right there can really start getting to compensate for you. Okay. So overall, like it just requires a little bit uh, of, of effort and it's really, really simple to fix. Like I wish, like and the fact that you're young and healthy mm -hmm. and like you don't have to expose yourself to excessive loads like uh, push pressing right now because of the quarantine thing, mm -hmm. I think this is the best time for you to actually, because, it, you know, like it, it's difficult sometimes with uh, patients who want to stay active and, and healthy and still want to push press and do CrossFit and stuff like that mm -hmm. and uh, clean and jerk and stuff like that. And I tell them, don't do it right now. And they're like, oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> And they, but they, now they can't. Now they can't. Easy. So there's, uh, I was telling the individual before and yourself, there's two types of people out there right now that it, this is literally um, why my office is getting busier during quarantine mm -hmm. is because there's two types of people. There's either people who are essentially letting themselves go right now mm -hmm. and there's people who are being proactive right now. There's only, that's it. Like there, <laughs> there, yeah. there, there really are. And you probably could see this within your friends. Mm-hmm. So if you end up letting this go, I'm not saying it's gonna get worse. I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball to tell you. I wish I could tell you like, uh, I'm not gonna be that doc or that person that scares you and, and says, oh, you gotta do this otherwise. No, there's a chance it'll get better on its own. There's a chance it won't. I mean, based off of what you told me for a year, don't know if it's gonna get better on its own at this point in time. Gotcha. Um, based off of my honest opinion. However, if you take that information, understand it, synthesize it, boil it down and say, okay, this is why it's not getting better. This is what I've been doing. Now you can start repeating what your process was over time. You understand what you've been dealing with. Then you could boil it back down and say, holy crap, this is, this is why I wasn't getting better because I was push pressing. I was doing this. I was doing that. I didn't do any rehab on it. I just tried to roll it out and mash it. Mm -hmm. You have to do both. Muscles do both. They don't just stretch, they don't just strengthen, they don't just get mashed, they also activate, they turn on. You have to align all these fibers. You have to align the shoulder joint, you have to align the neck into a right position so that when you go through that range of motion, there's puts less stress on that muscle. Okay. Therefore, it can heal, and then when it heals, then you can go back to normal activity. Gotcha. And then there's that progressive loading thing, mm -hmm. which you understand because you're in that, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't just hop in there, oh, I'm going to deadlift 400 pounds today. No, nah, man, you got to take that step by step. Yeah. Slow. 